I'm Mike Sullivan. Okay, this is going to be a little bit of a different type of video, actually a lot bit different. Uh, instead of an instructional video today, I'm going to take you with me uh, on my trip to Wisconsin to Carl's Place. Carl's Place is a golf simulator business. So look at this, what a welcome we got here, huh? Isn't that great? So look, I just walk in here with Nate and that is one of our proposed floor plans that we had worked on together. So look at that. And this is a small looking bay. And I have to also talk about this, the bowling alley. So when people come to use a simulator and they realize golf is not for them, look, oh, look at this. I guess they've already decided. I guess you've seen my swing on YouTube, huh? <laughs> so by the way, this is Mike here that I'm with. And this is Nate and Lindsay back here, right? So <clears throat> it's, we're right now trying to figure out what launch monitors we want to use for our, our indoor driving range. And what's, this is going to be a practice, primarily a practice tool, <clears throat> excuse me. So we want to be accurate as we can with club face angle, club path, angle of attack. Those are things you can really control in practice. And in my opinion, that's more important even than club head speed or ball speed, but we're going to put those up there too, because they are important. But those three ball flight laws of, um, by the way, club head speed is a ball flight law, but the angle of attack, the path, the path and the face are what we're really looking at. So, so again, this screen is just hooked up to that, to the quad, all right? Now we're getting, ball flight looks very similar. Okay. Are both of the softwares like similar as far as altitude and all that stuff goes and all that? I know you can adjust it, yeah. Yeah, so, so in this one you're getting 139 yards of carry. 130.9, excuse me. And what's the carry on the FlightScope software? Carry is 132.6, so it's a difference of what, a couple yards? 1.7 yards. Wow, 1.7 yards. Now, let's look at um, path. One degree out to in over here. Path over here. Club path. I'm not used to looking at this. Club path, one degree in to out. Okay, so it sounds solid, so that sounds like it's and it's similar curvature as to before. Okay. Do we get a reading on the right too, Nate? Yes, we do. Okay. Let's see what we got. All right, so carry 135.1. We didn't get carry, that's fine. We, we didn't include oh, carry. That, no, that's my fault to bring that up. All right, path 0.8 degrees in to out, path over here. 0.7 out to in. It's a small difference that could be an alignment issue with one of the launch monitors, okay? Now, face to pass should be close to the same. 3.4 degrees closed was the actual face. Face to path over here is 6.1 degrees closed. That's a lot more closed. That's double. And that should not be really that relevant to an alignment difference. Angle of attack was down 1.3 on the uh, Foresight Sports, and on the FlightScope Mevo, it was down 5.9. And here's the thing, Mike, right? So Mike was talking about his angle of attack. You don't want to be, we don't want to be like lulled into a false sense of security, right. right? By using that, maybe, like if you hit that Mevo, you might think you're just swinging better. I think I'm, well, I feel pretty good about that number. Yeah, you would feel good about it, but right. the golf ball probably knows this number. So in this part, be because the microphone is attached to the camera, it it's kind of tough to hear me. The sound isn't great. So I'll go over what's happening here. So now um, I'm, I'm trying out uh, the Mevo Plus. And what we're finding here as we're doing this is the, the path seems to be really close. Close enough that I would feel satisfied with it. Um, the face angle to path also seems to be close. Uh, everything seems to be pretty close. The one parameter that is different is the angle of attack. Now you can see as we're doing this that uh, you saw earlier that the, the Mevo Plus was positioned back behind me. 
and it's not the same exact height as the mat. So there's a chance that because this is, this is positioned down below the mat, it's giving us a funky angle of attack reading. So I'm gonna test this again uh, here in my, uh, in my current studio where I've got the exact same height going across. But basically what we're finding out here is the Mevo Plus is gonna be, it's gonna be affordable and I think it's gonna be fine. Um, if I don't feel good about angle of attack, I would frankly rather not have the angle of attack even available because you're better off having no data than inaccurate data. Um, and the other little factor with the Mevo Plus for me is that it's going to be a wireless connection to the computer that runs the simulator. And for a commercial setup where I'm gonna have 10 of these things, these things going at once, it might just be a, a better option to hardwire the, whatever launch monitor we use into the computer. So basically what we're finding out here is, I'm, I'm hitting all kinds of different shots, that might've been off the hosel. Um, basically what we're finding out here is um, the Mevo Plus, before we make a decision to go with that, it's just gonna take some more data and some more information. Uh, so after this, we're gonna ta start taking a look at the Unicore launch monitors. And those are nice because they're kind of like, they're like middle range price points. They mount up above the golfer and they're hired, hired, hired <laughs> they're hardwired into the computer that we're gonna be using. All right, so the red lights up here show that this thing's ready. That's yep. the launch monitor. Yep, and then we have the chime on there as well, so you may have heard that. Right. So here we're trying out the Unicore QED and um, again the camera is just kind of far away for sound so this the screen we're looking at right here this is the Unicore basically software and this is something that's really more for um, like a side screen. This wouldn't be what you'd normally be hitting into. Um, later on, they went ahead and expanded it for me so it looked more like a regular driving range. Now with the, the, the Unicore QED, uh, in order for this to work, this is more of an original product for them. The balls have to be marked and, and these golf balls are, they're Bridgestone factory balls that are made for Unicore just for this purpose. So there's really no, uh, it's not like a bunch of Sharpie marks that you have to put on the ball or anything. And one, the one thing about this is um, the ball needs to be positioned in a, in a fairly finite place, meaning you, you don't have a lot of room left or right where to position the ball. But that's really okay for us because we're going to have very wide hitting areas, so we don't have to have like a left-handed player, right-handed player have to be offset. Uh, so that's fine. Um, the one thing on this, the one limitation really is it, it offers some club data, but it does not offer angle of attack. However, the whole purpose here is for us to be able to really have, number one, a driving range, a place where people can practice and get whatever data they get be accurate. So even though this doesn't show angle of attack, it, it may be fine for us uh, because we'd rather have um, no data than, than data that's not accurate. Okay, so now we're using the Unicore IXO2, correct? All right, and Mike's hitting some shots. We're using the GS Pro with it. Now, this launch monitor is new, and so the software with this launch monitor isn't always talking so great to GS Pro, right? But the, it, it, the most important part is this launch monitor gives us all the parameters that we're currently getting with our high-end launch monitors, and we think it's accurate as well. Um, I feel pretty good about that. Now... This is the Unicore IXO2. The main difference between this and the IXO1 is the hitting area. So for us, we don't need a huge hitting area. So when I say that, what I mean is, let's say you get you have a small bay and the righties need to hit with their ball like over here. On this particular launch monitor, it'll pick it up. On the IXO1, it won't, but that's not a problem for us. So we can probably go with that IXO1. Um, there's another option, and that is the QED. Now, you might ask, what's the difference between the QED and the IXO? The QED is 20% cheaper, right, uh, Nate? 30% 30 cheaper, 30% 30 less expensive. For our intents and purposes, the only thing that really matters is 
you do not get angle of attack with that unit. So you don't get your swing information for angle of attack. So if we were to put our driving range with these, you wouldn't have that parameter, but it would be more affordable. Um, the other thing is these particular golf balls need to be used with the dots. I don't think anyone's gonna care about that. They're Bridgestone quality golf balls. That's not a big deal. So um, if you have an opinion, let us know. Is it worth having to pay a little bit more to have angle of attack? And if anyone wants to let us know, that'd be great. By the way, Carl is here with us of Carl's Place. That's he joined me. us. Thanks, Carl. Thanks. You know, Lindsay now already. So, all right, Mike. So how is it working with the GS Pro right now? Is it is it working okay or? No. It looks like it works great. Yep. Okay, that's awesome. And of course you can play a golf course on this. So the way things are gonna go, and I'm gonna come over here, let's go walk through these really quick, right? So this is all Carl's Place stuff. And they have a great setup. By the way, the lights are on, but when the lights are dimmed a little bit, it's absolutely great. So if you look over here at our perspective floor plan, what we're really thinking about here is, you see the bottom four bays down here? those bottom four ones, we want those to be like the uh, premium simulators. Those are the ones where we're gonna have a super immersive experience. Well, there goes the lights, all right. That's gonna be something where when you come out, you're gonna be looking at really high quality projection. You know, something like, like more like this, this one right here. That's what we're gonna be looking at, all right? And um, we're gonna have four of those and that'll be using the GC Hawk awesome technology. Then those, the driving range bays, which are gonna be up top here, those 10 units up here, right there, that's gonna be probably that Unicore type of a type of a product. It could even be a flight scope Mevo if we can figure out how to make that work really well, so. By the way, I don't know if I pointed this out. Carl, are you the bowler? Uh, I'm as good a bowler as I am a golfer. So when I same first, score. you weren't here when I, they first brought me in here, same score. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was saying, I guess is this after you find out you can't play golf, you just send people to the bowling yeah, ball, yeah. right? Yeah, you know, you get a sore elbow or whatever, and you know, you can come over here and <laughs> yeah, this is exercise great. a different part of your. Look at that. Thanks so much for letting me come out. It's a pleasure. And lunch was great too. Thank yeah. you very much. My pleasure, absolutely. Okay, so headed back to the airport. Had a, just a great visit with everyone at Carl's Place. Um, thank you so much. I'm, I'm sure you guys are gonna be watching this, so thank you so much for having me. Uh, so number one, for our, uh, the, you know, I, I, I think that the, Foresight Sports GC Hawk for our purposes is the best launch monitor that we can get. Uh, so we're gonna have we're gonna have some of those for our immersive like luxury type our immersive hitting base. So that's decided. Uh, the teaching area may or may not have the GC Hawk. We may go with the Flight Scope X3 because I think that's also a great unit. Uh, but the real question is uh, on our driving range bays. Um, we can go with the flight scope Mevo, which it, it may be a little, you know, a little concerned about reliability because it's connected to the computers with a wireless connection. Uh, also, we'd have to protect it in a way so that people wouldn't be able to kick it, and knock it offline too easily. Also, I, I don't. I just don't know if it's if it's really super accurate, especially the angle of attack, really the angle of attack issue. So that, that now we start to look at the uh, the Unicore products. So that original one, uh, the QED, that I think is 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 a really good machine for us. The only thing is, you, we don't get any angle of attack on that either. Now, it's also more than double the cost of a flight scope Mevo. Um, and we 
wouldn't be getting angle of attack, but we would be getting, I think, good data from what we do get. Uh, and it, it does have a little built-in camera that shows you impact between the club and the ball. Uh, another option is the Unicore IXO, and the IXO is an advantage over the or other Unicore, the QED, because the IXO, you do not need a, a marked golf ball, which I don't think is a big deal anyway, uh, but it does give you the angle of attack uh, reading, and as well as showing the camera, it has a camera showing the club at the ball. Now that unit is 20% uh, more to 30% more than the QED. So it's all about being able to give our, you know, our members, our customers, what they what they really want. So we're going to be doing some thinking about this, and uh, we also have to think about how we're going to construct the bays. How much do we want to use? Uh, enclosures that we can build versus kind of stick build everything out um, the stick build I like how I like how that can look the, the trouble with the, with building out the bay is it makes it a little bit more challenging to have the overhead launch monitors working that way we still have to do some work with, with crossbars and stuff like that so that's where we're at thanks again for having us and if you're watching this video uh, let us know what you think on these different options that we're looking at. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.